Hello students. So a lot of times you'll want to do experiments with bacteria and in order to see how bacteria are growing you need to create some food for them and the way to do that is to create some auger. So I'm going to show you here how to create auger plates so that you can test different variables with bacteria. So the first thing I want to say before we really get started is that this is not a totally sterile process. If you're working in a real lab, you would have a whole different setup where you had access to an autoclave. If we had an autoclave, we could heat all this stuff up to 121 degrees Celsius. You could make sure that all the bacteria are dead before you start so that you know you're starting with something totally sterile. For our purposes, we don't have access to an autoclave, and so we won't be starting with things that are totally sterile. We're going to do our best with what we have. So when you go to make your auger, the first thing that you want to do is get all the materials that you'll need. You'll need your petri dishes, you'll need a hot plate, you'll need a, a scale, you'll need the auger, you'll need some inoculating loops, you'll need a couple of other things. So you want to gather all your materials to begin with. Then to actually mix the auger, you're just going to do as it says on the side of the auger. So this one tells me to mix 40 grams of the medium in one liter of purified water until it's evenly dispersed. So what I'm going to start with is not a full liter, because that's going to be too much for the number of plates that I want to make. Probably going to start with 500 milliliters. So I have here 500 milliliters of water, and I'm going to add to it just 20 grams of this solution. So I'm going to stick this onto my scale. I'm going to tear that thing. I'm going to put on my auger until I get to 20 grams. Then I'm going to take this auger, and I'm going to put it into my water. Then I'm going to turn on my hot plate. I like to turn it to 9 or 10, pretty hot, but you have to wash this stuff. Auger has to get to the point where it's boiling, but if you leave it boiling too long, it has a tendency to overflow and it smells horrible, and so you really have to wash this stuff or it'll make a really big, really smelly mess. The other cool thing about this is we have access to these magnets, so I can take a magnet and I can stick the magnet in, and then I can turn this on the stir function. And that stir function will stir my auger the whole time so that I don't have to, which is really nice. Then I'm just going to wait until the auger gets to the boiling point. Once you start to see little bubbles, you want to time it for about a minute because the auger needs to boil for about a minute. But again, if it starts boiling too much, this thing is going to boil over. So if you see it getting close to boiling over, just take it off the hot plate until it calms down a little bit. Once you have your auger all ready, then you are going to be ready to create your petri dishes. So the first thing you want to do before anything else is you want to label these things. And so always label the bottom, not the lid. It's just good practice to make sure that you don't lose any of these parts. You want to label it with your name. You want to label it with whatever trial it is that you're doing. Let's say you're changing pH. You want to change the pH in here and then add the auger. So you want to label what type of pH you're doing. It's also a good idea to put the date on there so you know when this was made, especially if you're doing a lot of different trials. That'll help you to stay, stay organized. Then you want to lay all of these things out, turn them back right side up, put them all into a row. So the goal with the petri dishes is to keep the lids closed as much as possible. Whenever the lid is open, bacteria can get in there and that can contaminate your sample. And so you want to make sure you're keeping it closed as much as you can. Um, when you are ready to pour your auger, all you want to do is quickly lift the lid. Wearing a glove for protection, you want to pour in your auger then close the lid again and go to the next one. Just do that all the way down. Then this auger just needs to sit, it needs to wait, it needs to solidify into a jelly-like substance, and then it'll be ready to add the bacteria. So when you go to plate your bacteria, you're going to use an inoculating loop like this one. Um, when you pull this straight out of the bag, it's going to be sterile, so you know to start with that. Notice this little loop here. This loop is going to have a constant amount of bacteria that gets attached to it, so you know you'll be plating the same amount of bacteria onto each one of these plates. So to do a plate, you just want to take this and dip it into your bacterial source. Then you want to open your plate and you want to really slowly so that you don't break the surface of the auger move this thing back and forth all the way across your plate then you want to take your plate and turn it 45 degrees and do it again then you're going to turn it another 45 degrees and another 45 degrees so you'll keep plating in the same manner until you know this whole thing is covered with an even amount of bacteria once you're going to do that you're going to make sure to put your lid back on so that things stay as sterile as possible from outside bacteria then you're going to want to put this into the incubator 
Whenever you put it in the incubator, you want to put it so the lid is face down. That's because some condensation, some water will build up on the lid, and if you leave the lid above it, then that can fall down and drown the bacteria. So put that face down. Then you'll wait a couple of days when you get your bacterial colonies, then you can do whatever you will with them. Count them, look at percentage coverage, you could stain them if you want, all the different possibilities. So I hope that helps. Um, that is our process of how we are going to create some augers so that we can do some experiments with bacteria. Thanks students!